Hey, this is Maynard at Barn Shop Productions. Uh, today in uh, Barn Shop Auto and uh, Paint, we're going to uh, do a little maintenance work, which is a part of what uh, my name is. It's actually uh, Barn Shop Auto Paint and Maintenance. Today we're going to replace an accumulator on a 95 Mazda B2300. Now in this uh, particular category of vehicles, it'll also will interchange, the very same one will interchange with the Ford Ranger, there are certain models of the Explorer, there is a Mercury Mountaineer, a 97 5.0, it'll fit it. So there are a number of different ones that this particular part will interchange with. So what I'm showing you is actually able to be used in all of these series, series that I'm telling you about here of vehicles. The 95 through 97 Mazda, the B2300, the 3000, the 4000, also the uh, uh, Explorer 97 model, the Mercury. Uh, I believe the Mercury is only a 97, but the Explorer is a 96 and a 97. It'll also fit it. So with, uh, without talking any more about it, let's go change an accumulator and let me show you all about how to do that. It's very simple. Just follow me around and we'll go over there and get to work on it. Lights on, please. Okay, here we are at the little Mazda. I want to show you a couple of little tricks that you need to see. Basically, I've got some tools sitting here beside me, so if you see my hands go over there, you'll see what I'm, you'll realize what I'm doing. I'm actually um, picking up some tools to work with. Typically, this air intake hose here is simply uh, uh, in the way. Uh, some of them, it's a little further apart, but in order to get in here to these parts here, uh, I'm going to use a pointer, and if you'll follow this and kind of zoom in on some of these parts, I'll show you what I'm doing. This is the air intake. There is a band that locks it to the filter over here. There's a little 5 sixteenths nut on it. Over here is the other one. Take them both loose and just simply pull this up out of the engine uh, valve cover. Slips right off and move it over out of your way. Gives you all kinds of room. Now, if you look at this, it gets you, you see this? That's awful tight. And you got to have a pretty good size wrench to get in there to that nut. So it gives you an opportunity to get uh, in there real close and personal with certain tools. Okay, with that said and done, here's what we have. We have the line coming in here and the line coming in here to this accumulator here. Now, a couple of things have to be taken apart. This line has to be separated. This line has to be separated. This pressure switch has to be taken uh, off by disconnecting the electrical. The actual switch can stay there until I get it off. Once I get it off, I'll put it on my new uh, accumulator and set it in. Now. If you look real closely right here, and it's way down in there and very hard to see, uh, if you can see the end of this, uh, this thing right here where I'm pointing, there's a little 5 16 inch wrench uh, nut down there. And that little nut is on the end of a screw, and it's a bracket that actually holds this round cylinder in place called the accumulator. When I take it apart with this, with this little five, I use these. these uh, you can use a, a quarter inch. Uh, with a socket on it, whatever you want to use, but it's 5 sixteenths on most all of them. So with that in mind, that's what we're going to do. Now, let me say something else while I'm starting to work here. As I work, I want to explain a couple items to you. Just simply loose them. See how simple that is? Very simple. Now they have electrical connections to them, so you can't stretch it too far, you see here, but it's out of my way. Now I've got workroom. See that? That gives you plenty of room in there. Next thing I do is this little bracket here that holds these together, where there's no way that they can accidentally separate on these hoses here, this uh, pressure line. This pops up. All you got to do is just, it just, it pops on, it pops off. Okay? We'll set it aside. Now, we want to separate this. Now, in separating this, just keep your view on that right there for a moment. <coughs> You'll use a tool 
And I have an assortment of those uh, little tools to take um, these hoses apart. They come in a pack. You can get them uh, in different styles. This tool right here uh, is for separating the spring that's inside this little housing right here from its connection. And when you separate that from its connection, then those two will separate. Those two pipes will separate right there. Doesn't look like it, but it will. This is the simplest, cheapest, I don't know, five, ten bucks, less than ten bucks. You can get this whole set that goes to all kinds of different sizes. And they're also good for uh, uh, fuel lines as well. So I'm going to show you how to do this. We're going to snap this right on there. See that? Now, as I snap this on there, something you probably should see. If you can see this in the close-up, there, this is a circular. It just split, so it'll spread apart. This flange right here must go toward this raised piece here so that the back of it, that's just a small little slot there, this can slide in there and release a spring that's around there. So that's how it's done, right there. So let me snap it on there again. Slide it up here. A lot of times you can take your fingers... All right, you hear it pop just a little bit. When that happens, it typically separates. All right. With it like that, you may have to go over my arm a little bit. You kind of hold this and you work it. It's tough. And the reason it's tough is right here, you have three O-rings. Now, they have to be tied in there. If they're not tied in there, it's going to leak. And if it leaks, you lose your Freon. If you lose your Freon, you lose your air conditioning. So now, with this in mind, I'll give you a little bit of a hint here. You don't want to take something, as I have seen others do, with this piece on there, like a wrench like this, slide it on there, and take a hammer, and go, or another tool or something, and go whacking on that, to get this little piece here to go inside there where the spring is. You do, and you tear this thing apart, you're liable to scar this up right in here with your pulling this end out. Because when you do, it won't seal again. You'll end up losing this, and you'll have to replace this hose here instead of just the accumulator. So now that's that one. Now, let me gather up a tool here, a tool, and you'll see why it was important for me to move this intake air out of the way. Now, I've got a one and one eight inch uh, open end here, that I, and I've kind of broke this loose so it won't be such a struggle for the video. And I have a, an adjustable or whatever you want to use that will fit this other side right here. Now, I'm going to get my arms out of the way so you can see this. See those two? Now, they separate simply by spinning them like that. Now, when you break it loose, what happens is, this nut will screw back. See how simple that is? Well, guess what you've got when you screw that back? You've got another fitting right there. See that? Can you see how that fitting came apart right there? There you go. Now, I typically will take these apart before I ever take the bracket down here that I showed you loose that holds this cylinder in place simply because it stabilizes this accumulator so I can work with it. If it's sitting there slopping around in that uh, clamp, it's awfully hard to break it loose. So I'm going to stick my little wrench in there, that little uh, 5 sixteenths down under there. It, it's not important that you see how I get to it. You can see the screw right there. It is very clearly. And I just simply back, back this off just a little bit. Loosen that. That's the one that holds the whole bracket in place. The other one is this one right here, which actually clamps. I think you're getting in the shadow there with that, uh, possibly. But can you, if you can see that, there you go. You probably can see the little bolt nut head that I'm actually getting hold of. Sometimes it'll pop out, sometimes it won't. Sometimes you have to uh, get a little force on it. Okay, all your lines down here underneath that go through are still intact. The only other thing that you have to do here now is as I use my pointer to show you, you see this, this is a high pressure switch. Basically what happens here is this gauges the pressure as it comes through this system. With this pressure uh, gauge switch, if that pressure goes too low, it discontinues power and the compressor shuts off. 
to save the life of the compressor. If it's sitting there running and no fluid going through, it's a dry run. So it's going. It's just like anything, an engine without oil in it. So basically what's happened, and by the way, the system does have a little tad of oil in it. The other is if it gets too high. Sometimes the pressure will get way too high. When it does, this will save your compressor. Now, sometimes it'll go up high because the compressor has gone bad or low because the system has a leak, whatever the case. But now here's what you do, and I'll use my pointer to show you. See this little electrical switch right here? It's on the end of that pressure switch. Just take it off and lay it aside. Simple. Now, unless this thing gets hung on me, I should be able to just work it up and out. Guess what? There's your old accumulator. Now the reason this accumulator is in its position is it does just what it says. It accumulates trash and moisture. If it doesn't accumulate trash and moisture that gets in the system, that trash and moisture can get around and get inside the rest of the working parts and particularly the compressor. And it will kill that compressor in nothing flat. But this is what you have right here. Now this has a nut on it. I think I have the the tool out here to turn this I do that has a nut and you just simply break it loose now this is plastic so don't be bowing up on it too awfully hard or you'll end up buying another one and I think they're about they're less than thirty dollars about thirty or forty dollars or maximum that now I bought a new accumulator got a good deal on it. it's a good one see this right here in the old accumulator it also has a little o-ring here that helps to seal Freon system lines these are a lifesaver this is what keeps them from leaking these little low rings right here so there you go now this has in the top of it right here a valve right there has a cap on it this is where you can fill it up with freon and basically they sell at the parts store bottles of freon with the appropriate fitting on the end of it. So you just snap it over that. These have little niches in them. And snap it over and fill it up. Also, it has in it a little valve. Now, this valve is to let Freon out, reduce its position down low, and let Freon in. Also, what happens here is uh, basically the exact same thing that a tire on your car does when you fill up the, uh, the, the air in a tire. It's identical. It has that same switch in it. So there's that part of it. Basically, it's very simple. Like I said. Now, I picked up my new one. This one has to, happens to be a Murray. And on this new one, you can either use the uh, foam rubber little foam rubber around mine that came which was a pretty good indication that it was the uh, original on this 95 uh, but on this it has seals here and here they don't want this open and exposed to moisture getting all this moisture in it to uh, damage the system when you hook it back up so basically what we're going to do is we're just simply going to set it right back down where it came from right down there we're going to take this one off back here at the back, this first one, on the rear, that cap. When I said this one, I meant the cap. We're going to remove it back, just take it off. Inside this is a plug. <laughs> if you don't remove that plug and you hook this thing back up, the, the Freon can't flow. I've seen it done. And people say, well, why is it not f cooling now? I've got new, 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 this, that, that. Well, it's because this plug is probably in there. you got to remove it. Toss it. Get it out of there. And then you bring it back down. You set it in place. And you push it right back on there. And then you take your nut. And it is a booger sometimes to get these lined up. Because... Sometimes, parts don't go back nearly as simple as they came off. All right, now that started. I'm not going to go any further because i got some more work to do here. Now, on this side over here, if you can see that, I showed you that's where the little um, pressure switch 
was locating. And I told you it's important to have that little O-ring on there. Well, guess what? The new one comes with the O-ring. I'd be disappointed if they didn't send it. Because most people don't remember to put that in. Simply start it on there. And make sure that you don't do like I almost started there and cross-thread it. If it starts binding, you're not, you're not on the true thread. You're cross-threading. Now, let's get the little wrench that I used to start with. I'm going to cross it. Get, get my hands in the way. That's snug. I don't want to go any further. Also, I want to take the uh, cap and put it back on the top up here until I'm done. No particular reason, just to put it on there. Now, it does keep trash from falling down, by the way, in that little valve hole there. Now here again is another cover. This one does not have a plug in it. Now, these, I, I'm really surprised, these O-rings are in excellent shape. They're not even flat. They're still perfectly round. Uh, but yet that accumulator looked like it was an original, so evidently it's, it's been a good system. Uh, in spite of that, like I said, it came with all the new ones. It's probably a good idea to replace them, but when they're in this good a shape, right, good a condition right here, I, I don't know. It's a matter of opinion. Do whatever you want to with it. Slider in there. When you do that, guess what? It locks back in position. That spring slides back in that little groove in there, and it locks. Now, again, with my little 5 16 inch wrench here, I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to tighten that bracket back up that holds the clamp. It's not really important you see too much of that other than the fact that you know it's there and it needs to be clamped. By the way, beneath that clamp is a line that has a orifice tube in it. That orifice tube can be changed. If you have a problem with your Freon and it's dark or it's black looking, uh, or you find in any of these fittings, uh, you find a uh, bit of trash, oh, you'd better change that because that little tube is in there to catch other trash too. And it uh, is an ex considered as an expansion valve also with that friend. So I'm going to tighten this back down. I'm not going to tighten it so tight that I can't wiggle or move just slightly this fitting because I want to be able to make sure that I can get all of this back tight. And if it's binding, it could be a little bit of an issue. Now I'm just a hair off on that one there and you may be able to see you may not be able to see it's strictly the labor work part of it here this is the the uh, tightening up of the fitting so if you can see it that's fine if you can't that's fine it's not that big of an issue you just you saw me take it apart so just tighten it back together very simple ah, some people don't like to use the big wrench like this me I'm getting old and weak I need some leverage. So, now, before I go to fill in Freon back in this system, I'm going to make absolutely certain that each one of my fittings is completely tight. Now, I haven't, for cameras and time purposes, I'm not going to tighten that all the way down. It takes a little bit of time. I'm going to go ahead and reassemble the most, the biggest majority of it here. The, remember the little switch that goes to your uh, uh, high pressure switch connection. Uh, by the way, if you can see this right here, can you get that uh, a little bit of a close up on that? This part in here has a, it has a guide right there. See that? And this is offset, a little bit different shape. Well, what happens here is if you try to put it on the wrong way, it won't fit in that end of the switch. But if you turn it over where the shape is correct, it's all lined up. There it is. Simple. Very simple. Now, that little catch caught that I was pointing to there, and that won't allow it to fall free again. So it's stationary. It's in place right there. 
So now basically what you've got is an accumulator replacement. Now, something I'd like for you to hear from me. When you start this job, there are a couple of things to consider. One is the fact that, have you got Freon in there still? If you have, please don't dump it in the air. It's bad enough out there now as it is. Uh, take it to a shop and let them uh, pump it down for you. They've got recovery tanks, and some of them won't even charge you. Some of them will in spite, but some of them won't even charge you if they can keep the Freon. But they'll pull it down for you. That pulls this system clean. But now when you go to hook this back up, a key here is take it back to them or someone who has a little pump. It's just a very small little pump. It's called a vacuum pump. Hooks right up here and hooks in another spot and turn it on and it'll suck that system clean of every piece of debris and moisture and everything that's in there. When that's done, you don't have to. Some people don't. It's a good idea. I, I make it a good practice to do that. Then you can take from the supply house at your auto parts store a bottle of Freon. You hook it up here. You watch the gauge. The gauge will have on it indicating the color coding of where you're at. Red, green, yellow. Uh, when you're in the green, it tells you on the instructions very simply that you're in the proper zone. Also, another key is the compressor. If you can swing that picture around just slightly over and let me point with this so that you can actually see what I'm talking about. See this compressor here? On the front is a clutch. That clutch part right there, right in front of the serpentine belt, will freewheel unless it engages. It will not engage if there's not enough pressure in there, in that system. So you continue filling when it gets into the green, up in the green on the dial. This gauge will, this will engage and you'll start blowing. Now, when you do this and you're filling with Freon, a key is engine running, air conditioning wide open, and let her blow in. It doesn't hurt to have the windows open. It doesn't ha hurt to have them closed. Doesn't matter. But run the air conditioner wide open and run the engine at about, oh, typical idle. It might be at a little bit higher than idle because most idles, if it's a, a automatic, it's different than it is a straight shift. But I suggest about 1500 RPMs. That's above idle for most cars. So that does it. Now what we've got is we need to replace our fresh air intake here. Slip it back over. We haven't harmed anything. We haven't disconnected any wires. Nothing to do. Slide it up on it good. Grab our trusty little 5 sixteenths again. Keeps showing up, doesn't it? Locked. That can't come off when we're driving. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's the other one over there. Can you see it? Snug them. You're in business. Now you're ready. Now you need your little bottle of Freon. Pop her on there. Air it up. You got air. Guys, thanks. Don't forget to comment. Uh, subscribe to my channel. And at the same time, don't forget to like me. Uh, and watch for my next video. Now my next one is going to be along the same lines as my auto paint and maintenance, the auto paint end of it. I've been showing you how to sand and what to do to prep the car. The next thing I'm going to do is tape it off. I'll show you a little trick or two here and there around the door wells and so on. I'll tape it off and then we're going to spray it. And on this one, I'm going to use a primer that is a uh, direct to metal primer. The reason is, is I've got a lot of metal showing. I came down through the paint for a reason. There was purpose for that and I'm too metal so I have to use direct metal there and then I'll then I'll uh, uh, work that down and we'll go from there and the kind I'll be using is one that you can actually sand whereas epoxy once you put it on there it seals and does the same thing it stops the moisture and rust and all that from getting on the bare metal under your paint and popping the paint off but you can't work epoxy you have to spray your primer over it then, and then work it down. So we're going to go into that. Uh, I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Watch for me. Uh, again, like I said, I remind you to subscribe to my channel there. And thanks a lot. Barn Shop Productions, thanks.